Welcome guys, Brandon here from Terminated Gaming, once again back on World of Warships. And I've taken a break from playing today, um, because my team gameplay has been very lackluster, to put it nicely. Um, I complained to my clan shortly before this that uh, there's not enough reports in a day to hand out for poor play. Anyways, I digress. Um, this game was not filmed, or not played today, it was played a few days ago, uh, from the time of being recorded. And it is on the Two Brothers map, um, I'm in my Tier 8 Edinburgh, I'm grinding my way towards the Minotaur. This is the lineup for the game, it is a Tier 9 and 8 match, I don't believe there's any Tier 7s, nope there are Tier 7s, Never mind. I lied. Well duh, cause later in the match we'll see. Um, this match, from what you guys have seen the title of, um, is... I've decided to call it, uh, the battle isn't over until I say it's over. And you'll see why as we go. So here on Two Brothers, I spawned closer to the A-cap, so I decided to go out wide. This is one of my favorite positions to go to in cruisers or fast battleships to get you a different line of fire on the enemy. Um, you know, you have your main guys that go close to A on the mountain side, so if you get people that go out to the island side, they create a nice little crossfire if they're supported. If they're not supported, then, you know, they're kind of not in a great spot. So, I start by taking my 32 knot cruiser to the far right of the map. Of course, the British Light Cruisers, if you don't know, um, main, the main armament, they're 6 inch guns. This, the Edinburgh has 12, the Minotaur at tier 10 only has uh, 10. 6 inch guns, 152 millimeter. So these guns fire on the Edinburgh, I think, every 7.5 seconds. Uh, actually, I think I can check in game. Or maybe not. Usually you can scroll over this stuff and it tells you. Okay, apparently not. Anyway, so 7.5 seconds. It also gets torpedoes that they can singularly launch. That means they can launch them one at a time instead of the normal narrow and widespread. Makes it very good if you can pinpoint. A direction of a target you can put every single torpedo in the same line but they also vice versa can be easy to dodge in that sense because you don't have the widespread or the narrow spread that gives it even some gap in between them um, British light cruisers also get smoke screen I believe hydro starts at tier 7 with the Fiji not 100% sure on that one and then, of course, start off the game firing at that Neptune on the enemy team. Um, Neptune, of course, is the Tier 9 on the British Light Cruiser line. Another thing you might notice is the long travel with the higher arcs of the British Light Cruiser guns. It is very comparable to American Light Cruisers, except for the fact that it doesn't get HE. It only has AP. But this AP does get improved penetration angles with higher penetration than normal 6-inch guns. So, I was obviously losing that fight against the Neptune just right off the bat. So I decided to stop uh, engaging with him and just disengage and pop my smoke and hydro here. And he does the same over there. You notice another smoke screen to my left. That is the enemy destroyer. But we are just within range enough here to engage some targets. So... Like I said, the high travel arc and long time to target of the British shells makes it a little bit more difficult to aim than something, say, like the Russians, but gives it the versatility to fire over iron island cover. Granted, not necessarily as needed since it does get a smoke screen. Uh, the British smoke, of course, is um, shorter or more shorter duration than American smoke. Um, also doesn't have as good of... Um, characteristics of size wise as well um on this edinburgh captain i believe this was only a 14 point captain i can't quite remember his build off the top of my head but he's one of the special ones he's one of the dunkirk captains so he gets increased width of his smoke screens i chose that to be a little bit more versatile when i'm in a group of people so like me and like zane and another cruiser so we can both use the smoke screen for a cruiser that doesn't necessarily get a smoke screen or if we had two of these you can both comfortably fit in there. One can pop smoke while the other one's on cooldown. Um, with Jack of All Traits enabled, 10 seconds off with the Special Captain, I have about 30 seconds where I cannot be sitting in smoke if I didn't, if I, you know, didn't have one up. So that, 
that 30 seconds is kind of a an a, oh oh no type area um you notice i didn't shoot at the destroyer i wasn't gonna get shots around this little peak right here and my smoke's about to expire it's one of my main problems with the british cruisers this isn't, this isn't a problem with the ship it's a problem with my my gameplay as a whole is i'm not paying attention to when the smoke is starting to, oh, i mean i am aware of the smoke dissipating the fact that it's telling me up in the corner and you see me reversing i am aware of it but instead of going full speed forward and turning around i just start reversing for some unbeknownst reason with a shron horse bearing down on me and there you see me launch um on the end bird it gets two triple launchers one on each side that reload in like a minute five so each of those torps does like fifteen thousand damage max i believe it might be 13. it's a high number for a cruiser or for the torpedo um of course the shron horse rightfully so turns so he wasn't gonna hit those at all he also has hydro i believe so if he got caught by those, that would have been a problem. But I think he turned back in because we have our battleships and he doesn't want to get hit by him. I get spotted by his plane here, but my smoke comes back off cooldown. And you notice that wider smoke really comes in handy here. And another Massachusetts comes into view, so I'm going to start laying into that Massachusetts. Um, of course, I don't have a Hydro up right now, uh, so I won't be able to know about incoming torpedoes until they're in my smoke screen. Um, you might already notice kind of a problem that might persist right here in the fact that I'm shooting at this guy is the fact that there is a Sharon Horse bearing down on me. There's a Neptune somewhere over here and there's a destroyer. Why am I so close to him? Because there's a Sharon Horse. He's just in seven kilometers. Um, smoke firing penalty for the British light cruiser tier eight, I believe is five, eight, I think is what that shows when you fire. But of course, if nothing's within that section range, it's not going to be that. You notice that I'm pulling up the torpedo indicator to check. I'm also wanting to launch these torps. So I launch them as the, at the Neptune. And here's a problem I'm going to have here. So I'm speeding up. British light cruisers get increased like engine power. So they speed up really quickly. They don't slow down very as quick. But I just cut outside the smoke screen just enough. I believe that I get detected here. Maybe not. I know that happened to me several times where I come out kite out of a smoke screen and just get tarnished by it um of course neither one of these ships is really presenting great angles but the neptune decides to turn a little bit so he's kind of helping out um these these guns are pretty good um i do like the british six inch i've liked them ever since the bottom of the uh tech tree when i started granted after this 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 tree took a um hiatus while I was working on my American trees. I hit the Shrine Horse with one torpedo, so that's that was pretty nice. It boosts the damage numbers up by quite a bit. Anyways, I was grinding for the British Light Cruisers along with grinding for the Montana, the Des Moines, and the Worcester at the same time. So I decided to take a break from the British Cruisers because I was the furthest. I had Tier 9 in all three of those other lines while I was on Tier 7 in the British line. So I decided to pause there, went over and started doing and completed those three lines. And I also now have my Thunderer as well, finally. I got enough coal for him before he eventually gets eliminated from the game. Here, you might be wondering, well, why aren't you going dark with three things shoot? Well, technically three things shooting at me. It's because my smoke screen's about to pop again. So if you pop a smoke screen behind you, it doesn't matter how fast you're going because as long as there's nothing off to your side that can spot you anywhere else if the only targets that can spot you are behind you you're fine um so of course i set the smoke screen but the ship doesn't slow down very quickly like i said it speeds up really quickly so i'm behind or i'm out of my smoke screen right here but that doesn't stop me i'm gonna just hit reverse and fall back into my smoke screen while shooting at that Sharnhorst. It's because the Sharnhorst is the only thing I can see, because unlike the Neptune, the Sharnhorst has a massive smoke firing penalty. So when he fires, like he did right there, he will become spotted for the Miyoko, and the Neptune won't. Whereas if I was within 5-8 of the Neptune, me and him would spot each other inside smoke by the detection range, uh, the firing range. Granted, that's any ship. Um, notice with the 
a little bit narrower arcs that the ship is doing here, I'm not having as much success penning because I'm having to aim for the superstructure. And nope, that torpedo died, I think, literally right on his side. So that was unlucky. I could have probably finished him right there with a torpedo hit. Notice he's firing blind into my smoke. I'm going to launch those torps into kind of where the Neptune was shooting from and where he's shooting from to maybe hopefully hit one of them with more torps. And here I'm just telling the team, hey, let's take out the Scharnhorst because, you know, he's basically dead, so... The Miyoko's doing a pretty good job of shooting at it, but I just wanted to make sure I'm calling that target. That's what I'm aiming at. Hopefully that's what they aim at. Um, so, that Scharnhorst taking a lot of damage from us with AP. I think the majority of our damage is going to come from him this game, and he's going to burn to death. Because my shells all bounce, because, you know, not great aim on my part. Now I'm just waiting for that Neptune and destroyer i'm shooting at where the neptune's shells are coming from but granted when shooting into smoke there's a small problem in the fact that if you can't see where the shells are specifically yeah specifically it's kind of hard to hit granted we get nice sides on that neptune there for a decent amount of damage take out a gun turret uh, but if you have a spotter plane this is where a spotter plane is useful if you see a smoke screen with a neptune or any of the british lights or anything with a smoke screen of smolensk if you have a spotter plane you can look down more on the smoke screen and see where the shells are and coordinate your fire onto that location so it's really nice to have spotter planes for that reason not necessarily the increased range but being able to look into smoke screens basically not see the ship but see where they're firing from so now it's basically just clean up duty on this side because it's just the destroyer and the neptune the destroyer gives up his position by shooting at me um, but I still decided to shoot at the Neptune. I guess I, in my mind, did not realize that the Kitakase was stationary, because I probably could have landed a few more hits. Um, I do think I hit, hit him, but ricochet here, yep. Um, because it is AP, it's not going to do damage unless it can pen. Um, I'm just firing into the area where he's at to try to eliminate him. But, ineffective fire right there. So now he's, of course, going to try to run away from us. He takes out our Kitakaze. So it's just me and a Musashi versus him. But as you can see, when the AP hits, it's a short-fused AP round. It's going to do damage to destroyers. It's not going to overpen. Which is really, really nice when it comes to uh, these cruisers as well. They get the better pen angles, the better penetration values, but also the short fuse gives them the flexibility to be able to attack destroyers with that AP, you don't feel useless. It's kind of like the SAP for um, the Italians. They get the semi-armor piercing. They can't set fires just like the British can't set fires. But they have that short fuse, whereas the British actually get the penetration... Like, the, the penetration isn't nerfed off of those compared to against, let's say, the uh, Italians. So here, you might be wondering still, Brandon, why is it called the battle isn't over until you I, uh, until you say it's over well it is nine seven we're up two kills but we're down 200 points and you know there's six minutes left in the match there's four minutes before they win um, for a while we had afk players and for the most part we're not looking good health wise being up two ships compared to them like they have three ships but we only have a 13,000 health advantage um the Misashi was one of our players that was AFK, and he said, sorry for being AFK for a while. Um, and then the, our um, Miyoko, Miyoko that was with me said, don't worry about it, you, you already definitely made up for it. And I said, let's just win this. You know, this was one of those days where my wins were coming sporadically, not consistently. Um, and especially like today, like today, the actual day I'm recording this, not the day that this was done. I won one out of the eight matches. I had seven blowout matches. Actually, I had... I'll take that back. I had two games that would have probably been wins if it wasn't for a couple players throwing. Um, and then I had five that were blowout losses where I think we managed to kill two ships, maybe max each game. So those kind of games need to be addressed, I think, by Wargaming. But there is a video by Sea Lord Mountbatten that recently got posted again. Um of his ability to get to tier 10 in like 23 games 
So, tw you know, 23 games to tier 10 by spending 80 bucks is a scary thought. And then you can also buy the premium ships like the Georgia and the Alaska and all of them at tier 9. It gives people, you know, not saying all players that get those are bad because I own them myself. Uh, you know, I'm not spectacular in them by any means, but there are the ones that you get that have no clue how to play the game yet. They haven't played enough games in order to understand. Um, granted, then there's also play style differences too, so it's not all down to 100% poor play. So I only have one smoke screen left. I've used three this match so far. Um, and we still have three enemy ships. One being that destroyer. And two of which we know are up here, like the Surrey and the Georgia. But they have rightfully realized that they will win this match if they just run away. We have the numbers advantage, yes. But they have the uh, cap advantage, the numbers advantage. And I'm just sitting here, it's just like, why is no one shooting at that Georgia? That Georgia is what needs to die first to give us time. Because 40 seconds until this match is over. So why are we shooting at that Surrey when we can shoot and kill an 800 health Georgia? Um, so I'm putting shells and shells and shells into the air and finally get the Georgia, giving us a minute now. The Surrey's doing the right thing, he's running away. And then our Miyoko has actually ran into the destroyer in the south, and I'm sitting here, it's like, oh god, that Miyoko, please, do not die to the destroyer, give us a chance here. So he, we're telling him he needs to go get into C so that we can stop the C cap. I'm getting into B to stop the B cap, so that gives us more time. But either way, the enemy team still could win this if they stay alive. We just don't have enough time to really catch up on cap right now. So... This Surrey gives me a few parting gifts. I decide to use part of a heal, get up to a decent more health, so that way I can take, you know, hits. Because I'm going to be the first person that runs into the Surrey, and my thought or my inclination at this point is yes, we can cap and catch up on points, but we have to get into D and we have to kill them because we're probably not going to be able to catch up fast enough because there's only two minutes forty left in the match, and we're down two hundred points. Miyoko kills the Skane, but now he does need to get into C as fast as he can in order to stop the cap. So I slowed up here, and actually the Masashi is going to say that I should not, shouldn't have slowed up. But if I wouldn't have slowed up, I probably would have took one of those Torps. Granted, I didn't. when I slowed up, I wasn't worried about the Torps. I wasn't thinking about those, if I'm being honest. I was slowing up to make sure we got the cap. Because it's one thing to just pause, it's another thing to have it. Or Miyoko's already saying this is a close game. I think he thinks that we're going to lose at this point. Because, you know, there's two minutes left. They win in a minute. Less than a minute. Um, but I'm going to push as hard as I can to catch up to the Surrey. Edinburgh's not that fast of a ship. 32 and a half knots. Uh, the Surrey is also not that fast of a ship. But he's been at the will of... He could be at full speed the whole time where I slowed up. Um, which, by my own accord, I slowed up. I pop Hydro just in case more torps come. Um, and that's where the uh, Musashi says Edinburgh goes full speed, and I'm like, this is full speed, because the Edinburgh is not that fast of a cruiser by any means. So we're coming around. I'm Inclination is that he's going to be far away, and then all of a sudden he's spotted, and he's basically stationary. Um, and the Miyoka's still saying, not enough time, not enough time. The main thing here is if I don't die, I can't die. We stopped all caps. They're stuck on 992 health. He kills me, we lose the game. So I popped a repair to not burn as much, and I'm just sitting here, it's like, okay, I'm gonna eat one of these torps. It's not gonna kill me, most likely. Um, I should have probably turned in just to justify that, but I got him, left me on 4,000 health, and we won the game. Um, so post-battle results, as always. Um, I'll let the recording catch up all right it was it was a hard fought game you might be looking at this number and like what why is it so high and we'll look at the credits xp later and we'll figure that out why we did 118,540 no you know it's nothing special nothing special 263 hits one torpedo hit uh two kills you know cool not it's not spectacular by any means but we did come top of the team because we got that dreadnought achievement we were in the game the whole time otherwise i think the masashi would have probably been higher on the team um and then on here really there's nothing here to really talk about i don't think 
Um, we did do 11,000 damage with floodings from that torpedo, which was pretty nice. And then finally, the XP and credits. The reason we got so much XP is it was the, uh, I believe the first, yeah, first win of the day. And I had every single flag running and one of the best camos available. So 25,000 regular XP on top. So I hope you guys enjoyed this replay. If so, rate it be much appreciated. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out. Shut up and sit down. Oh, my God.